Hi everyone. It's the 1st of November. It's now 10.45 in the evening and it's a Friday evening. And it's a very wet Friday evening. It's currently raining again. No change there. I swear Norfolk is the wettest county in the UK. All it seems to do is rain here all year round. Just get rain. Anyway, I've got a lot to talk about so this may be quite a long vlog. But uh, anyway, and there's plenty to show you as well, so it's not just talking. Uh, but first, I've got a very bad side at the minute. Very, very sore. Uh, a few months ago, I think it was actually back in spring, um, while we were installing the pond filter in Mum's garden for the fish pond, I was actually laying on the ground on my front, and I'd reached into the trench that we dug for the pond filler to get something and I felt this rib move in both directions actually. I felt it move up as well as back into place. So I'm pretty certain it dislocated. And that left me with a very sore side for at least a month. Um, well, I've actually just gone and done the same thing on my left side. Different scenario, but the same thing. Uh, yesterday I was doing a favour for a friend, they took a partition wall out of a garage and there was a pair of sockets, power outlets, just dangling there in the breeze along with a light switch and uh, neither him or his other buddy liked playing with electric so they dragged me into it yesterday morning. So, the sockets he said he didn't need, we could take those out. So what I needed to do there was pull the cables back up into the attic space, which was mostly boarded out apart from a section right across the middle. I don't know why. <laughs> right across the middle of the garage, I mean. Um, so I'd climbed up there after disconnecting the sockets and making sure the power's off, obviously, um, to pull the cables up so I could terminate them together in the attic space, because ob obviously it's a circuit, so they've got to be reconnected together. So I'm laying there, and the cable I need to get to is the other side of this bloody gap. So I'm laying on the front again, and I reached over with my left arm this time to grab these cables, and boy did this rib move. That one I'm 99.9% .9 certain that dislocated. And you know, as soon as I sort of flinched and took my weight off it, I felt it go back as well. It sort of sprung back. But, uh,. Yeah, that hurt. Not so much as soon as I did it. Well, it did as soon as I did it, but then it sort of settled down and I thought, I'm going to feel that later. Oh, and I felt it later. So yeah, I've done myself a mischief again. On both sides, same thing, both sides, doing the same thing, just laying down and trying, you know, reaching for something. Anyway, I must be getting fragile as I get older. So, I'm going to move on. It's going to be a couple of different subjects. One is going to be quite heavily computer related and the other one is going to be heavily toy car um, related, die cast related. So before I get into computers, I just want to mention that Cat's Custom Trikes is coming down tomorrow morning, I hope. I suppose that depends on the weather. Um, because she wants um, a full suspension bike, an electric full suspension bike. The one she's been using is a rigid frame. We stuck all the e-bike parts onto that. She's getting bored of that now, I think. Or I think she's getting bored of it, which is why she wants something different. She wants it all on a suspension bike. Can be done. Fitting the battery to it might be a bit awkward, but I'm sure we can come up with something. Um, so, the game plan is, she will arrive here about 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. We'll then go from here, once she's had a rest obviously, so she's got quite a way to come. Um, we'll then head from here down to Mum's, because that's where all the tools and bike parts and things are now. Um, but before I get stuck into that, I've got a model railway to go and pick up, or some model railway stuff to go and pick up. It's 
a Hornby set. There's at least a set there. I don't know what set until I actually see what the loco is. But there's that and a bunch of other stuff. In fact, there could have been two sets at one point. There's um, two passenger cars, coaches, whatever you want to call them. Um, six various freight wagons, whole bunch of track, two controllers, and even I don't know what they call it, like a, a plan map, a mat thing. Now you can put your track on and just make a little layout with it. Don't know if I'll actually need that or use that for anything, but who knows. I might, if I actually like the layout, I might actually use it. Track plan, that's it, I think that's what they call it. Mm. Pardon me. All for 30 quid, which is an absolute bargain. It's going to leave me completely skint till next week, but I don't give a monkeys about that. I've learnt in the past that you do not let such bargains go. <laughs> and I refuse to do it. I've let so many go because I can't really afford it or something like that. And I just thought, no, I'm not going to do it anymore. I keep missing out on these. And uh, I really wanted it for the track more than anything because I haven't got enough to make an oval even with what I've got because one of the straights are missing. This one's got a bunch of spare straights, so that is not the problem. Not anymore. So I'm looking forward to picking those up at 11. So I think by the time Cat's Custom Trites gets here, had a rest, a drink, and whatnot, and we get down to Mum's, it would be pretty much time to go straight from Mum's to go and pick that up. Because uh, where I've got to pick it up from is just around the corner. In fact, I think about a month ago, a month and a half ago, I actually picked up a couple of bikes from the same place. Or well, the same road, I should say. Not the same place, same road. So, <laughs> not far to go. Literally round the corner from where Mum is. Anywho, that all aside, let's move on to the computers. Beep. I believe, I'm going to knock on wood as much as I can, that I've fixed this. As you will be aware if you've followed my videos, especially for the last few months. I have mentioned a number of times where this has had random, intermittent episodes where it won't boot. And it'll throw up a ra well, what seems to be, to me, a random error. One of them was operating system not found. And the other one was disk read error. And the only way I could fix that to get it to boot was to disconnect the three hard drives, I've got three storage drives in here, and turn it on again and it would boot from the SSD. But that meant I had to shut it down again, plug in my hard drives because I've got all my music and whatnot on there, so if I want to listen to music or play a game because my game saves are on another one, I had to plug them in or have them plugged in, so I had to shut it down, plug them in, boot it up and it would boot. And then it would behave for a few days, maybe a week if I was lucky, and it would do the same thing. But that intermittent problem was becoming daily. Um, and last Sunday, my drive that has all my music and other media on, even though the computer was seeing it, before that it was actually having a couple of issues where it didn't see the hard drive there, even though it was there, it just wasn't coming up on the machine. But anyway, It would freeze. Every time I tried to access a folder, I'd get not responding. And even if I left it, it wouldn't do anything. I left it for a while, wouldn't do anything. Managed to end program, which refreshed the whole desktop. So after a few times of that, I actually shut the computer down and rebooted it. But it wouldn't reboot that Sunday. All it sat on was the um, Windows 10 logo with the little spinny thing underneath. That's all it did. It just hung on that screen. And I unplugged the suspect hard drive that I was actually thinking might be failing, and it booted. Um, now, my brother and someone I know on a Discord server I'm on, it's actually for Laurie's Mechanical Marvels, I'm on his... Uh, channel's discord server someone on there suggested 
as well as my brother to update the BIOS on this and I did as well as the chipset and what I also did I took the, the uh, suspect drive out of this one except the SATA cable I didn't use that I just took the drive to it in the kitchen where I'd made up like a, a temporary mess <laughs> I just grabbed a motherboard from my stash that had DDR2 RAM on it and a, actually had a dual core AMD fitted to it sat that on the worktop connected up a little power button connected up a power supply um, stole a hard drive out of one of my Dells the reason I didn't use the Dells is because there weren't enough SAR sockets on them they have two actually one for the hard drive that it has because you can only put one hard drive in those specific Dells and one for the um, DVD drive so wasn't no good that's why I used the other motherboard so I stole a hard drive out of that so I basically had a a computer mess on the worktop connected up the hard drive from this using a blue SATA cable from my box of SATA cables in the kitchen plus a 400 gigabyte Seagate Barracuda which I was using to make a backup of the faulty hard drive but lo and behold when I got everything working the uh, faulty hard drive was working absolutely fine on that setup in the kitchen and I think it took me about an hour, hour and a half to transfer or to, you know, copy all my folders and whatnot over to the other Barracuda Seagate that I want to make the backup with. But um, I actually came back in here, put the original hard drive back in there with the SATA cable I was using in the kitchen. And so far, touch wood, nearly a week later, I've not had a problem. Not one error. Um, I was having a few other issues where it would actually take longer than it should to boot to desktop and on top of that sometimes when it booted the whole desktop would freeze and I'd have to sit here for a minute or two until it sorted itself out which was getting annoying because that was becoming regular. I actually also noticed that my boot drive, the SSD, was not on SATA 1 like I thought it was. It's got four SATA connections, one, two, three, four. Those has got another two that you would have thought would have been labelled five and six, but they're not. They're labelled completely different. I can't remember what they say now, but they're, they're different. And they do not show in the BIOS either. But I plug things in to those and they work. So that's puzzling. <laughs> so yeah, I did change the um, configuration around a little bit as well. Actually, I don't think I reconnected the um, DVD drive. Whoops. I'll have to double check that. But yeah, like I said, almost a week later, it'll be a week later this Sunday coming. It's working. I'm going to give it another week though before I put that side panel back on because I can guarantee I'll do that and that bloody thing will play up. That's how uh, That side panel has actually been off for the past two months that's how um, less intermittent the problem was becoming and that's why my microphone is not in the holder because every time I did I'd have to take that off lay it on the floor just to get to this cover uh, I haven't got the thumb screws in the back just in case I had to take the cover off the only reason I put this one back on is because I've got a big old fan in the front here which actually creates quite a draft on your hand when uh, the covers off so but yeah, I'm actually happy now. It seems to be working. I'm not. It's booting up a lot quicker. I'm not getting the desktop freezing while it's booting up. So so far successful. Right. While we are still on the subject of computers, because I don't want to sort of switch from one to the other, I get confused when I do that, and I end up forgetting what I've already mentioned and what I haven't. Um, just flick you round. I have been working on this one. Now, unfortunately, I didn't film it to make part two. Not yet, anyway. Because I can't use that video card because upon searching for drivers for that, there is none available for Windows XP. So that kind of threw a spanner in the works in using this one. I don't have anything else suitable. I've got these little adapter things. 
but uh, that's not that suitable. Now I know my brother's got one that would be great in this, but I don't know if he wants to use it in his XP build or if he would actually sell that to me. I'm going to ask him. Next time I see him, I'm going to ask him. He might actually have another one kicking about for all I know. That wouldn't surprise me. Um, and I couldn't show installing the video, the video, the audio card because for some reason that's not, well. The original one is there. I couldn't get drivers to work for that one. Um, actually, I did find some drivers that would have worked, I think, but I'd already put this one in and turned the computer on and it installed this. Even the game port is installed and working. I've got sound coming out. I didn't have to go search for the drivers. It is another Sound Blaster Live card. Um, so... Yeah, that's for a spanner in the works as well. Plus the power supply burnt out. Not this one, this is the replacement I put in. It's a 300 watt Asus, just an OEM power supply for this. Should be good enough for this build. It's only got two of those, a few little fans and... That's it. The only things that are really going to be running all the time would be the fans and the hard drives. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, that should be... More than adequate, that power supply. But the other one is in the bin. Because while I was actually playing with this, I'd left it idle about 45 minutes. I came back through here. I was about to do something with it when this just turned itself off. Just randomly shut itself off. And I was like, yeah, what happened there? And uh, I put my hand on the power supply. And I couldn't leave my hand on it. It was that hot. I kid you not. I went like that and I just I couldn't keep my hand on it. So I thought I'll leave it to cool down, because it might have thermal cutout, because for some reason it obviously got hot. Don't know what Nemo's yowling about. Where are you? Oh, he's probably gone back in the bedroom. Oh no, he is still down there. Yeah, so it's, it just wouldn't work, it was totally dead. The fans might might gave a little twitch every now and again. But uh, I opened it up actually in the bin in um, pieces <laughs> just to see if I could find out what it was that got so hot because I was actually smelling hot plastic as well that's what it smelled like melting hot pla actually like wires that's what it smelled like you know when the PVC on wires start melting but I couldn't find any sign of that in that power supply which is a bit puzzling so uh, yeah part two will be coming but not as I had originally planned I'm looking looking on eBay for um, a video card. I've actually got a bunch I'm watching and some low profile ones so I can upgrade my um, little Dells. Maybe not these ones but I've got a Dell something or other I can't remember in the bedroom that runs DDR3 and whatnot. I'm gonna upgrade that one with a video card so I want at least one of those as well. So I'm watching those so yeah part two is gonna appear Shut up! Don't you talk to me back. Or talk back to me, I should say. I'm trying to tell you off and I can't even use proper grammar. Where are you? I heard him. I heard him on what sound... Oh, he's there. In the bathroom door, sitting on some paper. That does not surprise me. Anyway. Still on the subject of computers, you've probably noticed I've got some more laptops. These aren't mine. Um, <clears throat> these are these belong to the father of a friend of mine. The same friend I did a favour for and hurt myself, so I'm not doing any more favours for him. <laughs> I kid. I'll do more. I'll still do favours when he calls on me. But anyway, his dad wanted me to see if I could get any of these working, preferably all four, but. Are they going to cost? That's the downside. They're fixable. This Sony I actually can't test because I don't have a power supply. It's like the Dell plug, but not as wide. The um, diameter's a lot smaller. See? I don't have one for that, but as you can see, this is actually quite tatty. And it's got a bunch of bits missing. Um, I don't know if it's got a hard drive in it, because I haven't actually opened it up that far. But it's got the battery missing. Cover missing. Possibly a hard drive missing from there. There is a connector there. There's a connector there, so... 
which is battery, which is hard drive. Maybe hard drive goes in it, I don't know. <laughs> this is a whole new different, a whole new, a whole new different, a whole new laptop to me. So, I can't do a great deal with that. So I, I did a video um, on these and sent the video to him because he can't read. So I thought that would be the easiest option. I don't have a smartphone to do like a voice message to him either so um, I just did a quick little video put it up on YouTube and linked it to him um, this one is as dead as a doornail this does absolutely nothing I've even wiggled the um, power plug in the charger socket to see if I get an inkling of lights but nothing so chances are the motherboard has failed in that and uh, well something's failed on it and it's just not working uh, then we've got this one, which actually does turn on if you hold the power plug in there and in there hard if you really push on it. <laughs> so the charger socket is gone, that needs replacing, and the screen is actually damaged. So fixable, but you then got to think is it actually worth the money? It's only an old Windows 7 machine, Windows 7 Home Premium. Screen will probably set you back quite a bit more than the charger socket, so you know. I mean, for Windows 7, I could just give him one of them because <laughs> that's on Windows 7, so I could just trade if he w really wants a working laptop for something. And the last one is this one. Now, the charger did do something when I plugged it in, the light did come on, but it flashed like it was flashing some sort of error code. And once it did that, it went into a state where it flashed between white and amber colours, just permanently. And this is dead, it won't turn on. So, somewhere there, there is an error. I might try and look up the error code, but it's probably something gone wrong on the motherboard. And again, being another Windows 7 machine, same as that one and them, are they really worth forking out that much money with? You could get much more up-to-date one you know pretty cheap so I'm not sure but that's why I made the video so he could show it to his dad and or tell his dad and then his dad can get back to me and let me know what to do with them to bend them or whatever I don't know I mean it's not hard to change the screen on that not hard to change the screen on anything. And no, the screen will not fit from the Sony. It's actually a small screen on the Sony. I did check that one. <sighs> Unfortunately. Anyway. That's enough for the computers. Why don't you shut up? Noisy sod. Right. Cars. Diecasts. Collecting. I've really been collecting this year. I mean, I've probably doubled, if not tripled, the amount of corgis I've got. Um, and I have actually done a bit of rearranging on my corgi display. I've changed the vehicles around. So they make a bit more sense. They're in a bit more of an order. You know, I've got the transits there, and I've got the um, ERF fire engines there, and, you know, Rover, Porsche. Ford, Capri, Ford, S got Fords, and so on. They're all in some sort of order now. This will also be changed because I'm going to step the display down from the back. So back being the highest, next row being a bit lower, next row being a bit lower. Until I just basically, well I'm going to come out to about there for the third row. And the fourth row will go on that way. So I've got some spare boards for that that I can use to make that with. So that's the plan, but uh, look at this. That box of cars there is pretty much what I have purchased over the past, I will say, six weeks at least. So there's quite a number of um, Matchbox, Hot Wheels, Majorette, I don't know what else in that box. Um, in fact, I've got some more Matchboxes there that I bought from an admin, actually, of a... 
of the Diecast Scrapyard Facebook group I'm on. I've already bought from a few couple of people on that group, so unfortunately I did miss out on some because I found his post like four hours later, but I did grab a bunch here. Some I've already got, like that one and that one, but they're castings that I just can't resist. Two here I haven't actually seen before, these are new to me, and that's these two. Well, I've seen that one because you've got the standard yellow one there. But uh, I've not seen one in this sort of ready orange colour. So that's new. Um, I had seen that one before. That's probably the newest one here. And Nemo's being a dick because he's in way now. Most of them are actually sort of from the 80s. So, uh, well, the ambulance and the police car from the 70s, but the rest are all. 80s, I believe. He really is being a knob tonight, isn't he? Will you piss off? Yeah, I know, people watching the video, you're going to bloody laugh, aren't you? Get off! You little rat bag. Anyway, going back to the display. <laughs> he's actually, he wants attention. Look, he's following me. Anyway, going back to the display. I'm going to get two more of these shells cut to go in here. Matchbox, I'll go all the way along. Majorette, probably not going to go all the way along. And again, I'm going to make a rear ledge. In fact, I'm going to extend this rear bit. I'm going to make or cut a block of wood the same size as this box, or a length of wood, I should say, to go all the way down the back so I can put more cars that way down the back. Uh, and then perhaps put these larger vehicles either in front or on that shelf. That's going to be in line with this one, don't know yet. As for this sort of shelf, what I want to do is make a little platform, again out of some wood, to sit cars on this way up at the back on both of these. So these angled ones will sit at the front. Uh, And after that, along the front of this one, I'm going to put these as well. So they're going to go along this shelf as planned. And then another row along there when I've filled up that top shelf. And speaking of, <clears throat> my voice is going. I've got two more. Bought these on eBay during the week. Uh, £2 each. That one's not actually hanging on there properly. I might have to just pop that pin out of there and do that before it falls off. So yeah, I've, I've really gotten into collecting again. It's quite strange because four years ago I pretty much stopped. I just bought literally the odd one here and there. But uh, after my friend passed away a year ago, who was um, very big on his cars, he loved his cars, he loved driving, and uh, I don't know, after he passed away, the spark just got reignited. And I've just been collecting like crazy again. I actually don't know how many I've actually bought this year from various sources. eBay, Facebook, car boot sales. Yeah. I am happy though. I do enjoy collecting them. I've actually been trying to find some newer Matchbox cars because uh, nowhere here in town sells them and I don't know anyone that goes up to Norwich to you know anywhere near it any store there that sells them so I've basically taken to um, eBay that's where I found this one the Ford Police Interceptor and uh, put that up there so that don't get damaged and this Chevy Caprice this was boxed I actually opened that one because that one came with another one that was boxed it was being sold as a pair and I got them for five pound and some odd pence posted so this one was on the better card so I kept this one sealed that's the advantage about buying two, so you can actually keep some sealed. Because obviously the sealed ones, if you were, you know, doing this for the money side of it, 
perhaps as a future investment, you know. So you can leave something to your grandkids or your kids. Um, you obviously want to go for the, the sealed ones. Because, I mean, some of these can actually go for a pretty penny as well. But if I like it enough, I probably would pay them. It depends how silly the price is, because I have seen some really silly prices on things. don't know if I'm going to get any in this style of box. They seem to be one of the cheapest. It seems like not many people like these ones. can't remember where I got these from. Oh, this one was from a... From a Facebook buyer. I can't remember who though. That was a long time ago. I can't remember where I got the bus from. Maybe if I actually like the vehicle inside, I might buy them, but yeah, I don't know. I think it's just gonna have to depend on my mood the day that I buy them. <laughs> or the day I'm looking. <clears throat> Right, I'm losing my voice, so I need to go and get a drink. This is the second take of this video. Don't think I've forgotten anything. I've gone through everything I want to show you and talk about. Uh, eventually, I will do a video involving these laptops. <coughs> eventually. They've been sitting in there for about a month, waiting for me to do the video. What I wanted to do, which was inspired by one of my subscribers, was to just go through those one by one, powering them up, showing them off, and showing their specs and whatnot, and yeah, just basically go through that. It would probably be, I was going to say at least a two-part video, but I think that's actually going to run into three parts, that one. Anyway, I'm going to shut the video down because I don't want to ramble on too much. Oh, my sinus has been a nightmare lately. So, uh, thanks a lot for watching, everyone. I hope you liked the video. And I will talk to you again very soon. Bye!